Hello everyone, and good day to all of you. I wanted to talk today uh, and also kind of just do an experiment and look at the effect of bullet setback. Specifically, I'm going to be using a 9mm uh, with SIG V-Crown. I've been carrying this for quite a while, so I have quite a few rounds that I've been carrying. Um, got about five chamberings, as you can see on each of these. I'm going to be doing 10 rounds of just brand new loads, uh, and then 10 rounds of those that have got some pretty serious setback. Now, not all of these have exactly five chamberings. Some of these were pulled a bit early when uh, they just kind of prematurely got a lot more set back. And uh, I'm just mostly going to see the, uh, in theory, the, these are all safe still. Um, in theory, of course, once you have too much setback, it's going to become unsafe. But I'm just going to see how much, if any, does it spike up the pressures at this point. I'm firing at 15 yards here. And as I said, just doing 10 and 10. And I'm going to be starting with the brand new ones. So let's get started here using the lab radar to test the velocities. Uh, the one at the very bottom left, uh, I definitely pulled that one, but the rest are pretty good. So, moving now, I'm going to load up the ones with setback, and we're mostly going to watch these pressures and see if they're any different. These were pretty consistent so far. All right, now for the ones with uh, setback. We'll see how this goes. And I'm going to aim these at the center bullseye, because I am expecting there to be more dispersion, but uh, there might not be. So I just analyzed everything and uh, let's go ahead and first let's look at the target. These groups are objectively quite bad. I'm not a very good shot with a handgun. Uh, regardless, this uh, I kind of just wanted to see if there would be any, much of a difference and oddly this is the group that I had with, with the new rounds and that's a significantly larger group. Uh, and I did pull this one hence why I did two measurements here. So 6.7 inch group including this flyer, 5.27 inch group with the nine shot group. Uh, 3.87 inch group, however, on the ones that had setback, which is very bizarre. Uh, maybe because this was more straight on, maybe it was just more of a comfortable position for me to shoot in, more stable compared to kind of leaning upwards to hit this one. But uh, regardless, uh, from what I've read, and this isn't just a cope, um, from what I've read, even with setback, it generally, unless it's really extreme, tends to not cause much of a difference in terms of precision. So that's it is what it is, uh, draw your own conclusions with that. What I do find more interesting, however, is results from the lab radar. So I'll go ahead and put those up on the screen right now. And I also did try to find the brass uh, from the cases with setback, and I was able to recover eight of the 10. I just, there was a lot of nine millimeter at the range, and so it kind of, uh, couldn't find the other two, but I did find most of these. And uh, actually, I'll go ahead and start talking about the, uh, the results from the lab radar itself. Um, if you were just looking at the footage, and actually myself included before I actually analyzed it, it looked to me like the bullets, uh, or the rounds that had bullet setback were actually having a higher velocity. However, uh, if you look at that chart right there, um, it actually didn't. It was, it kind of just fell into that same range of maximum and minimum values, which is really interesting. So pretty much there's no difference there either. And all the standard deviation and everything was just really, really similar. So, didn't really see any erratic velocities, which usually is indicative of a pressure problem there, the lab radar. So looking now, another way you can tell if there's any issues with pressure is to look at the primers. 
um, and the cases themselves just they, they show a lot of signs if there is any problems. So especially when looking at the primers, you, you can see a lot of signs if there is pressure problems. Uh, the first most major one is if you see flattening, and there kind of is some flattening on this one right here. Another thing you can look for is cratering, which you might think that these have, but actually I've noticed even rounds that don't have a pressure problem on this P320, they, they do that. It's just something with how the rounds fit, and you will have that on certain guns. On AKs, for example, I always see it even on rounds that don't have a pressure problem as well. Uh, ARs, generally not, and if you do see it on an AR, that usually is indicative of a pressure problem. But here, you can look for flatten flattening, cratering, as I said, uh, and also, especially if you're having major issues with pressure, you can see if they're backed out. So, this one here, definitely pretty flattened, but none of these are backing out at all. So, this one maybe had some more pressure on it. If I look at this, this was one that was chambered. And uh, some of this, uh, my marker kind of got, you know, kind of rubbed off, burnt off a bit when these were cycled through the action. But, uh, looks like this one was just chambered uh, four times so not as much as some of the, some of these other ones this one just kind of happened to be a little bit more worn in that's so why i used it for the test so what really is the conclusion to draw from here um well you definitely do want to cycle through your ammo it looks like uh, at least with these rounds do note that these are actually hand loads that were properly taper crimped and everything so uh, maybe they last longer as a result of that, but uh, at some point you will start to have an issue with bullet setback as you just rechamber around over and over. Uh, at least up to five chamberings though, again, at least on this ammo, does seem to be fine in most cases. This one I would maybe start to worry about it, so I could see maybe five being the, the limit, but uh, aside from that one just kind of being a bit of an anomaly, the rest of these don't show any flattening, none of them are backed out at all, they're good. Another thing that it might also depend on, again, ammunition related, um, but might depend on what kind of powder is in here. Uh, if it's pretty filled up and if it's a, a specific type of powder that has more of an issue with being compressed, then you probably will see more of an issue with pressures. Uh, if it's not properly crimped, the bullets, if the bullets themselves are not properly crimped in, you'll probably see a problem there as well where it might fall all the way in and then rotate on its, you know, you can like rotate it. Uh, that would be bad. That would be really bad. But with properly manufactured ammo, even if it's a hand load, you can actually load it a uh, surprisingly high amount of times. This isn't going to change anything with how I kind of recycle and carry my ammo. I'm still going to be kind of putting them in the just uh, practice pile of ammo once they reach five rechamberings. But at least with the amount of times I rechambered in this test, didn't really see much of a difference in either the velocities and the pressures based on what we could see from the primers and uh, well, this is kind of odd. Uh, you can't really draw much of a conclusion here either, but like I said, I, I haven't really ever seen much of a change in precision either with uh, rounds that have pressure problems. But let me know if you have any other questions on this or on anything else in the comments below. Thanks for watching, especially if you got this far. Take care, and I will see you all in the next one.